What's the most corrupt thing you've witnessed your employer do? Rusty Nail said. I was working at a small brewery bar, and caught the owner dipping into the tip jar at the end of big nights. It was a new place that just opened and was kind of struggling during the off-season. We literally had a staff of two bartenders and the owners, husband and wife, so the bar staff would pool and split that day's tips. Come to find out that he was taking a cut of the tips because he worked there too. When I confronted him, I explained that it's actually a violation of the FLSA. In fact it's even an exact example listed as illegal things to do with tips. He argued that it was his right as owner and fired me, so I reported him to Deptive Labor. Totsper 1982 said. Had a job out of college selling Yellow Pages advertising. A big part of the job was just renewing the old ads in the book and we had to call each business to have them renew their ad. But as the Yellow Pages book became more and more obsolete more customers would cancel their ads. So the company changed the policy of having us call each business and instead put in a policy that any customer who didn't specifically call to cancel would be auto-renewed. Then they would purposefully send out the renewal notices late enough that the customers couldn't cancel in time to avoid the following year's charges. If one of us did actually get a call from a customer looking to cancel and with time to legitimately do so and we actually cancelled them, fired. 42 Spoons said. Growing up my father always told me to save my pay stubs and time receipts. I ended up working a job in my early 20s at an airport moving cars. I get my paycheck one day and I realize that it's not right. So I do a little digging, and a lot of math, and I figure out that the company was taking hours from me. I ask around and it turns out that they were taking hours from literally everyone at the job site. After doing more math we figured out that over the six months we all worked together. The company had stolen a combined 400 hours from 8 people. Cloud Strife 1191 said. Worked in a restaurant that didn't allow employees to work over 40 hours as they did not want to pay any overtime. Instead if you wanted to work extra or if they asked you to work extra they would delete hours off of your time card to keep it under 40. They always asked you when they did that in a kind of hush-hushed way so it wasn't exactly without permission but I think it was bullshit all the same. Dana said. When I used to housekeep at a hotel, our head housekeeper would go into all of our checkouts and steal our tips before we could get to them. I remember a few times seeing tips in my rooms and foolishly not thinking to pick them up before they disappeared. A few of my other co-workers witnessed similar instances. At one point, a guest came up to me and said she'd leave a big tip in her room for me BC it was a mess. I found out later that the head housekeeper cleaned the room herself. She walks out like a year later BCRGM demoted her to regular housekeeper BC everyone had complaints about her. She was a very awful person in general. I don't get it Brett said. I was a mechanic that found out that the company was not letting me fix customers cars that had oil leaks when the customers who had paid for a 200k mile warranty. The manager would tell the service writer to say that the warranty company declined it and eventually started making me take a photo to him so that he could tell me that the leak wasn't bad enough to fix. The customer paid for a warranty and the company wasn't holding up their end of the deal because it was costing them money. They are one of the most profitable car dealerships in my town and now have three dealerships and are expanding. Miraco 323 said. One time when I was a chef in college, I worked 14 days straight with half of those days being 12 hours days. This all fell in one pay period too. It was rough but it was summer and I was gushing over the amount over overtime I was about to get. It came out to like over 70 hours overtime. I was supposed to get almost an additional $1000 on my paycheck. I calculated the math with tax and everything and couldn't wait to pick up my paycheck the next week for that pay period. I pick it up. And the paycheck is quite larger than I'm used to given I normally only work 25 hours a week, but there is zero overtime on it. It was short almost to a thousand bucks. I got to the HR office the next day, it was located at a different casino, and ask, and they go yes oh in Nevada, you only qualify for overtime if you average 40 hours a week normally. That sounded like bullshit to me, but I asked my mom who used to run finances for our family business. And she says that is in fact 100% bullshit. She pulled up the statutes online and it clearly said if you exceed 8 hours in a day, you get overtime. It said nothing about a weekly average. So printed that bitch out and drove right back down to the HR office, and showed it to them. 
the lady at the desk who just told me that Lai calls out the head of HR. She would frequent the different locations to check in with people and was always nice, but you could always tell she was shady as fuck. They both seemed to get very nervous and in a stuttering voice okay we will reevaluate. Miracle 323 said. I never heard anything or got any apology, but when the next paycheck came, the exact amount of overtime I calculated was put on that paycheck down to the penny. I tell some of the other guys in the kitchen what happened, and apparently the family who owned the casino or restaurant was located and was known for pulling shit like this. Making accounting errors knowing a lot of people who do direct deposit don't even look at their pay stubs. Funny how these accounting errors always ended up in saving the company money, and never gave the employee extra cash lol. A server no more than a few months later had the same exact shit happen to him. Rat bastards. Reduxon said. I've had a couple that try to pressure you to work off the clock, without actually asking you to do so in order not to get sued. Suckered some people into doing it, if they complained after the fact they got canned. And by that I mean they got all hours cut until they were forced to quit so they couldn't file for unemployment. I just made it clear I wasn't playing their games in the first place. First time they tried me I was like I sent that working off the clock. And they were like oh no no, of course not. We're not asking that at all, just looking for volunteers. I can't volunteer. Do you want me to stay, clocked in, or go home since my shift is over? Oh well. I suppose you can go home. We'll figure it out. Needless to say, they did not like me much after that and made working there a living hell. Cut my hours to low numbers, but not altogether. But I had already asked my old boss if they'd take me back, which they welcomed me back with open arms. Only reason I took the new job was they paid like, three bucks an hour more. But ob's not worth it if I'm expected to work for free. Mike's phone said. For anyone experiencing the cut hours thing, it's called constructive dismissal and in many states, check your own, you're still eligible for unemployment. Expect it to get declined in the first time, appeal and explain. If more people did this, employers would have a harder time doing this shit, in part because the employees so victimized getting unemployment would cause a rise in costs to the former employer. I pushed the button said. Yup I had to do this. Worked for a bookstore and or dead part of the year kicked in. This was back in 2008-2010ish and jobs were hard to come by in my area. So I kept working minimum wage at 8-14 hours a week. We were going to starve soon. I filed partial unemployment and after two payments, suddenly my company could give me 32-40 hours weeks. Crazy how they could suddenly afford to work me full time. They would only do this for two weeks though cause after so many weeks of full time they would have to offer benefits. So every third week would be less than 20. Whatever we made it through the skinny times at least. I refiled every time I went more than two weeks without full hours. They filed bankruptcy about 10 years ago and died. I loved that job but the company was just sad. Tricky Garden said. This happened to me in college. I was working at a high volume upscale jewelry store and liked working in the warehouse. They really wanted me working sales because I was a young fit female. They figured that I could upsell men buying jewelry for women. First they tried to get me to switch by implying that I made mistakes by switching a packing label on me. They sent a baby shower gift to a new, very not pregnant, bright and blamed it on me. They agreed to forgive me if I switched to sales. When I still didn't want to switch they cut my hours. Incidentally the store is still in business but is in no way considered upscale any longer. I guess their business practices caught up with them. Chile 90 said. I have another one that I remembered after seeing a comment. Not so much corrupted employer but employee. I worked for an insurance brokerage. There was a broker that was also on the town hall committee. Our brokerage handled their liability insurance so when it came time to pay their insurance premiums she took the check and deposited the money into her own bank account. So because of the type of insurance they had, it was something called broker build. Meaning the brokerage would pay for the premiums and it was her job to ensure we got the money and cancel policies if they were in arrears. This woman eventually got fired because she was very far behind on handling customers and all of this came out in the wash. Turns out she stole a few thousand dollars from the town committee. Keep in mind the community is only like a few hundred people so yeah. Small town drama. I think she ended up moving after. Twisted Lemon 732 said. 
A few years ago I was working living at a McDonald's in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. The area manager decided to save this store so she became very involved in its day-to-day -day micromanagement. One payday morning she made an announcement that, because everyone kept coming and asking for their checks and bothering her, she would be giving them to us when she felt we deserved them. I called the local Department of Labor, who referred me to the state, who referred me back to local, who then told me they just didn't care and weren't looking into it. It eventually resolved itself anyway when she handed checks out the next day. Evil Potato 1121 said, Not as bad as some others in this thread, but it still really pissed me off. I worked for a very large telecom company. They would do things around election time like ask for donations to the super PAC that they were a part of for the good of the company or send a recommended list of people topics that we should vote for in the elections, in so many words, but what really got me pissed off was when net neutrality was becoming a huge topic. They sent everyone an email explicitly stating that they were in favor of net neutrality and that we had nothing to worry about if we heard the company name mentioned on the news or in court when it came to that topic and that they were on the side of the consumer and being free to visit the sites you wanted to visit with no catch. Of course that was a lie because when numbers came out for what companies were lobbying and spending how much money for what side of the argument, they were one of the top contributors against net neutrality. It's one thing to be a greedy corporation and not tell your employees how you're being greedy and underhanded, it's a completely different level to straight up lie to their faces about it in a company-wide email. Medjuk said, I used to work at a place that was owned by an organization with some political affiliations. There was a rich Middle Eastern investor who owed my employer money. Literally millions from a contract that they simply never paid. It was quite a sensitive issue and one that everyone really wanted to keep out of court. Some negotiations took place and the investor agreed to pay but in return, wanted a spot on the board. Everything was agreed, the guy would pay and then there would be a big party event, with some press, for his appointment to the board. At any rate, a few weeks before this was supposed to happen, the head of my organization became very ill and needed surgery and was gone for several weeks, the big party where the investor would become a member of the board had to be delayed. It turns out, our big boss wasn't actually sick at all and did not need to have surgery. Actually what happened was, the head of the organization that owned my employer was running for political office and was worried about the optics of the whole event, only being able to get this rich Middle Eastern dude to pay us what he owed by putting him on the board and granting him a bunch of power over the organization, and basically ordered her boss to feign a long illness that would require the event to be delayed until after the election. Smil 3 Angel said. I worked for a company that managed parking meters. They would hand out tickets if you didn't pay or exceeded your time on the parking meters. I worked in customer service. This meant answering calls and letters from people who wanted to contest their ticket. The problem was we could not help people who called in. We were advised to tell them they had to write a letter and that, only then, could we review their dispute. The second problem was, not once were we able to approve a dispute. Every single dispute was refused. No matter the circumstances. We would have older people call who went to a hospital for a procedure that lasted 10 minutes longer than expected so they were issued a ticket. They would be on the phone crying that they were unable to pay for the ticket, couldn't we have compassion? I do. But, I wasn't allowed to show any. They would ask to speak to a manager and my manager absolutely refused to take any call. We were not allowed to send any calls to her. The corrupt part, at the time I was working there. It was illegal to issue tickets for parking meters by privately owned companies, which this was. The management team was constantly going to court to fight this but it was still illegal. So, we had to tell every caller they had to pay their ticket, write in a worthless letter that would be rejected or pay a fine that was technically illegal, and of course couldn't say any of that. I lasted a month. Optoff said. At the first company I worked at the general manager had all his personal expenses paid by the company. His wife also had a company credit card and was paid a salary but she didn't work. The company paid for things like their groceries, house mortgage, car payments and family vacations. The kicker is he wasn't the owner of the company. He had a creative accountant that hid these expenses but the owners became suspicious and they hired an auditor. It took them about four years to figure it out. He was fired and his family fled the country so I am not sure what happened to him. Chile 90 said. I work underground in the mines. One place started having, what the workers found out later, 
was asbestos type rock in the ore. The company took samples of it and then said it's kind of like asbestos, but it's not old enough to harm you. Later after a bit of more concern from the workers, it was found out that the sample they took came back as inconclusive due to something else. They lied and allowed their workforce exposure to asbestos. I quit after that and found work elsewhere. Wimble Wimble said. I'm guessing it's IBM? They're being sued for open racial discrimination. Literal emails that say I didn't know is black at that N word out of my office. Sex discrimination everything from paying women 1-2 of a man for the same job, molesting staff, sexual assault. They sack people if they find out they're gay lesbian or vote in elections differently to the elected board. In age discrimination they rounded up a list of developers and programmers aged over 40 and fired them all. Now they're facing billions in lawsuits from tens of thousands of ex-workers. Rumors are the exec board have started dumping their own shares and preparing to jump ship before IBM crashes into the ground, burning. Toyso Zero said. I worked for IBM. I made 30k less than the opposite gender doing the same job. Additionally my VP once yelled, like the screaming kind, at one of my co-supervisors in a meeting for hiring a pregnant woman once he found out. Called him a fucking idiot because now they had to pay for her to go on a two month free vacation and it was a waste of everyone's time to bother training her and we shouldn't even hire women if they plan on getting pregnant and how can we turn her out before the baby is born without getting in trouble because we won't be able to after it's born. He was a joy to work for. The real reason I left was because he was a lunatic and I couldn't take it anymore. More on him just for fun he once asked me to get a poster board made up for some department event. I told him I needed a read marker for the thermometer part and that we didn't have one. He looked at me and said can't you just make red with the other colors. I was like, no. Him, well why not me it is a primary color him so, dot. I had to get to color wool and to explain colors to a man with three kids. He got mad, then eventually came back having bought what had to be every pack of red sharpies the store had when he went and tossed a bag on my desk spilling boxes everywhere and walked off. He would also say super inappropriate things to women. He would get you alone in a room and awkwardly flirt or talk about what he looked for in a woman, like very specific details I like it when they have just a little bit of a pooch in the belly and described it with hand motions. He looked like the quintessential sleazy used car salesman. He had one very wonky eye, never knew where it was looking, was working on his third failed marriage and for a time was living out of his van in the parking lot and showering at work. He was a real gem. Sir Wem said. Had a bar manager say hey let's open up a casting couch for new hires. As the eggs. Chef I fired him on the spot and called the GM of hotel. He had him blacklisted. And yes it is true there are employees blacklisted in food service. Some get caught, others do not. All properties I have ever worked at had phone trees in case a health insp, ice or OSHA showed up. To tip off all properties in area. Just takes a two minute phone call. Zibrasher Chow said. Cinemark theaters used to force employees in the snack bar to work overtime until the cleaning was complete, but then would go back and retroactively change time cards so that everyone clocked out right at 11.15 for closing, as closing was only supposed to take 30 minutes after the last showtime starts at 10.45. I was a weekend closer for a few years, and occasionally would be there until 1M plus on really busy nights when management wanted thing detailed. All of those hours went into the nether. They'd hide the fact that you weren't getting overtime by lying on your pay stub. They also used to fudge lunch breaks, saying that it was too busy to send employees on their lunch at a proper time, so you'd occasionally show up to work and go on lunch 15-30 minutes after arriving, or you'd go on lunch after 7.5 hours in your shift and just end 30 minutes early, but with an expectation that you'd hang around for 30 minutes until you your shift was over. I do my best to avoid their theaters despite them being everywhere. Lumpy Bird 9245 said, This year I passed grade 10 which in Nepal is known as an iron gate very important, but due to the coronavirus exam got cancelled and the government decided to evaluate us by internal evaluation, basically by teachers giving marks to students according to the past performance. I was the best performing student in the school in the terminal and extracurricular activities well. I got a 3.9 GPA out of 4, 
I was satisfied because I used to get the same GPA in real physical exams but my friends who failed in previous exams also got marks in the range of 3.80 to 3.90 with the lowest being 3.60. Then I learned that the school was selling marks for RS 15,000, 150 US dollars. The school had asked my parents for money but my parents being confident of me they denied the offer. I am proud of them but now my marks are also regarded as corrupt by colleges and it's getting harder to find colleges. TLDR equals school wanted money for marks at it equals it's not directly related but somehow it relates. Magic Bumblebee said. I worked at only one restaurant where all our CC tips went onto a paycheck as opposed to cashing them out at the end of the night. Every pay period I kept a copy of every single shift report, or whatever it was called, that long ass thing you'd print out every night, and check my pay stub against it. Everyone thought I was weird for doing this especially because the math was kinda long and involved calculating taxes and tip outs. I'm not even sure why I did it, I trusted the owners. I guess I just didn't like the concept of not walking out with my money because I knew sketchy people work in the industry. So anyway after doing this for months and finding no errors, but getting really good at the math behind it, I get a check that looks short. I instantly know something is wrong. So sure enough I do my math and find my check is missing about $115. I tell my manager and he sits down with me and I go through my math and he's like huh, yep you're right. My coworkers were stunned and all started keeping their printouts after that. The restaurant cut me a check for the difference. I'll never know for sure what happened but I suspect their accountant. She didn't believe my check was short and my manager, who was newish and I never really cared for prior to this, went to bat for me and definitely earned my respect. Moral of the story, never trust your money in the hands of others. Edit, a word. Audrey Spurt said. My most recent employer gave me the job with the premise that she would be stepping down she liked my education and experience and she would have me take over eventually. She was super on our ass about everything yet had no idea how to do the actual work. She also constantly had her phone going off loud and with flashing lights yet while I was dealing with a broken foot, my dog going through chemo and family shit, where my family lives 12 hours away, I was not allowed to have my phone on me. Two other girls quit and she knew I was beginning to become unhappy, BC I saw how she treated them, and she said she was going to make me assistant manager. But still wouldn't let me have my phone close to me even with everything going on. I had written a whole report up for her of things that I thought could benefit the place and she agreed. Until she actually read the list two hours later had her and her husband back me into a corner to fire me telling me they never promised me the position and that I was completely wrong and threatened to call the cops on me. I was told later on that she had said the same exact thing, promising a management position to two other girls, but never actually stepped down. Now I don't even like having to travel in that town, but I can't let that woman have power over me. The new job I'm at treats me so much better. Don't settle folks. Especially in this job market. Narbada said. I used to work for a lifeguard agency that also had the lifeguard do chair and umbrella rentals as well. Fucked system, I know. I had paycheck deductions for loads of petty shit like sand in the chair seats and not having my umbrella line in the ground before 8 a.m. 8 a.m. was when we started getting paid and it took me at least an hour to get my equipment set up. I was paid a salary of $450 a week rather than an hourly rate. But that was assuming I never took a day off, work less than a 7 day week and your paycheck was short the hourly rate for a day. Hourly it worked out to well under minimum wage. The owner was all sorts of tied up in local politics, any complaints about shady business practices went unnoticed and anyone making complaints found themselves out of the job. I ended up taking so much money from that company, I'd rent an umbrella or two then fudge the books at the end of my shift. I never once felt guilty about it because of how much they would fuck us over when it came to money. Anytime I had a deduction I just rent an umbrella set and not turn in the money, I pocketed it tens of thousands of dollars over the course of several years of work, even so I was probably only making slightly over minimum wage. I fought corruption with corruption, fuck him. Midas Art Flower said. Worked for a convention and trade show company. The gals in the sewing shop had some of the most boring, thankless jobs on the planet. I suspected most of them were undocumented and they probably were. Then I found, completely by accident, that these ladies, some of whom had been there for years, were all working 30-hour weeks, with us part-time labor, and weren't receiving benefits. 
Someone beat me to it and reported management to the labor board. Lo and behold, in a matter of days, management announced that, out of the goodness of their hearts, the sewing shop positions were becoming full-time. Ugh. Uo Eardrum said. One of the employees was being blatantly harassed by the manager. Guy got fed up and called HR. He told me he was stepping out to lunch and he was going to call them. He walks outside on the phone, gets in his car and pulls out. Not even five minutes later, I hear the boss's phone ring. He used to always answer and talk on his speaker. He answers and I hear the lady say hey, manager, just a heads up. We have a driver of yours on the other line right now issuing a formal complaint against you. He took it off speaker and closed his office door. I know HR isn't truly there to help you, it's there to help the company, but that completely blew me away. He was still in the phone issuing a complaint and they called the manager and warned him. Driver got fired for poor performance a week later. Suspicious Bag 9798 said. Worked for Spux, it was great at first. When I started I worked 3 hours away from headquarters and management was pretty awesome, no issues. I transferred to the south with them and it was a shit show from day one. Pretty much no one got fired unless they stole from the company or the DM didn't like you because you complained about work condition or how they treated you badly. Anyway the last straw for me wasn't the PTSD or verbal abuse from managers and DM. It was the fact my entire in-law's family homes were about to burn down because of a massive wildfire and I called in sick one day early of my original planned vacation because I was having a mental breakdown. My manager called me at 7 a.m. to chew me out on the phone to the point of me crying because she could lose her job for her poor planning and it was my fault. Mind you this is the same manager who gave another employee three days off cause her cat she just rescued died. Needless to say I was glad my two weeks were in and I never showed up after that to finish them. Emexual Everest had said. So my boss old boss has one restaurant and he works very hard for it but he regularly steals stuff from grocery stores. Steals a lot of wine glasses and kitchen gear from Ikea and if there are any big parties at the restaurant he always makes the tab cost more depending on how big the party is to once a 1000 extra euros on food and drinks no one really ever received. I'm not a saint either cause I helped him with the making tabs more expensive part most of the time since I had more knowledge on what was consumed the most and would not be noticeable on a receipt. Malidov said. Restaurant I worked at fired a girl. Two of the shift managers. A married couple, thought they could do whatever they wanted because we were teenagers. When she came to pick up her last check they refused to give it to her and instead forged her signature and gave her part of the check in cash and kept the rest. They told her it was for coming up short on her last shift count. The thing is they count all money at the end of the night and if you're short it's recorded and submitted to payroll. She never had anything submitted against her. The two managers were just pieces of shit. We told her it was illegal and she needed to tell her parents and call the state labor board. She refused and nothing ever happened. Those managers got fired about a month later for starting a fist fight in the kitchen. Pucker and Whiskey said. So, I was not a nurse. I was a security guard overnight. This hospital was in the ghetto and we always had a good fight waiting for us with homeless or people struggling with addiction. Plus, at the time, our jails were completely full so our local police would leave people at the psych ward and start their paperwork at the hospital. One night, I'm dealing with a person acting a damn fool on meth when a missing person code comes out. Then, a code blue comes out. That means someone isn't doing too hot. So my supervisor gets on the radio and explains the missing person is the code blue. They can't find him but his heart monitor is telling the floor he was on he's not making it. Well. A new guy who just started as a tech finds him on the stairwell. They attempted CPR but he didn't make it. Unrelated, but that hospital on the overnight shift was haunted as hell and that stairwell railing had his fingerprints and the dust on the stair railing and walls. I went up there to watch Haunting of Hill House. Anyways, we notify wife and we know a lawsuit is coming. So bigwigs and lawyers want to look at the security footage. The man got up, talked to the charge nurse outside of his room. Charge nurse walks away, man in heart monitor get on elevator. He was confused so he took the elevator down and then opened the door to the stairwell and went up the stairs. Five floors. Charge nurse got a week suspension. Chip 46 said. I worked high rise construction in Miami 1975 to 1993. One employee bought a used building to store equipment and materials. 
The building was previously owned by a painting contractor. My boss sent me to the building to empty some sketchy chemical containers left behind by the defunct painting company into a floor drain. The building was completely empty except for these containers. I refused and was let go a couple of weeks later. Another employer had an informant at the Fort Lauderdale OSHA office who would give him a heads up whenever one of his job sites was to be inspected. Whenever this happened, all employees who were working in a dangerous manner and all without safety gear were told to take that day off without pay. I can't believe some of the risky things I did for a paycheck while working for that company.